Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and this week we're still going to stay on the topic of Viticulture World because that just went on sale or on pre-order uh, this Wednesday. So um, this actually arrived in the mail to me this last week, and so I thought we'd take a look at the Viticulture World Replacement Pack. Now, if you remember, there was some talk about the fact that there were a couple of problematic uh, figures in the expansion, a couple of conquistadors. And Jamie did some work, uh, I think, I don't know if it was with Thinker Themer is, or in response to Thinker Themer, their video, uh, it, it, more specifically the conversation that they had privately with Jamie. And so this is the pack that came from that. So let's go ahead and do, we can't say an unboxing, right? Let's go ahead and take a look at the cards. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at this Viticulture World Replacement Pack. We have um, kind of just immediately up front here, we kind of have an explanation of what this replacement pack is. And it says, In the original printing of the South America continent for Viticulture World, we made the mistake of including two conquistadors as characters whom players can leverage for special abilities. The action of these conquistadors came at a grave cost to indigenous peoples, and even with a strong disclaimer, we now realize these were not people worth memorializing in any way. We ask that you replace the cards referencing Cortez and Pizarro with the cards in this pack. So, very cool there. Um, and then we have, um, you know, just the, the description of this. Um, my point is not to read these to you. I just wanted to kind of give you a look at what they are you'll be able to zoom in a little bit but also i'm not trying to you know create something that is gonna easily be printed or something right that which is why i'm you know kind of having my hands all over this um also we have the chilean wine and talks about one of the new characters that you can leverage to help make wine and then women take the lead here and there's talk about another one of the people that you can leverage here in south america to help your vineyard out and right here we have isadora who says you pay three lira less when you gain uh, shoot <laughs> influence uh via action p Hopefully that's the right uh, word there. And then we have Don here, uh, Don Sylvester, Sylvestre. Um, the first time you plant a vine via action C each year, gain any one same exact uh, grape, uh, color and value shown on that card. So that's that's actually a pretty nice one there when you plant that vine to, to gain the, basically to gain the immediate uh, gain it immediately and then we have just this uh, you know QR or QR <laughs> UPC code and that's the that's the replacement pack all right so um, just a just a few cards there and um, I don't know if these are actually just being included in every pre-order of Viticulture World pre-ordered from Stonemeyer, or if this is a, an additional cost. I did notice on the the shipper that, that came to me that it, it had a dollar cost and it was zeroed out because this is a sponsored show and this is sponsored content. But um, in any case, uh, your your original copy of Viticulture World. If, if you got a first print edition, will have the the uh, Cortez and Pizarro cards um, that can be replaced with these if you so choose. Um, but also, I kind of wanted to talk just a minute about the the controversy around replacing those cards and, and kind of the 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 backlash, I guess, a little bit, and, and why I think we we shouldn't look at it that way. Um, I'm going to read a, a, a public conversation that I had with someone in, uh, in, in one of my videos about this particular issue. And um, I want to be very careful to, to state that um, how I read it is how I 
read it to myself. Now that may not have been the intent. I may actually do it some disservice. Maybe um, maybe I make it sound worse than than the this person intended for it to sound, or maybe I was generous. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to try not to read any um, meaning into it. I, I just want to share it because, again, I think this gets the heart of the problem. If you look on BGG and the reviews, Viticulture World has... I mean, a lot of Stonemaier games, like you you have people that just vote ones because they're Stonemaier fans that want to vote tens before they played the game, which, whatever. But some of the ones on Viticulture World say, like, insulting to my culture or something like that. And um, so this conversation kind of relates to this, and, and, I, and I just wanted to share it because ultimately I think we should be celebrating that, that this pack was created. Um, and, and I'll explain why. Um, so this guy, um, and, and it's out there, but I'm just going to say Mark commented a couple of weeks ago and said, meh, publishers and creators always depict devils and demons in the themes of games, and you don't see Christians and Catholics crying about it. Magellan was featured in movies, books, and even games, and he was responsible for the murder of my people during the 1500s that continued to the 1880 or 1800s, and Vikings killed, raped, ransacked villages, and still people love that theme. So the question is, where do we draw the line? This is not to mock think or themer, but in a, if is a game only offensive when a vocal group of people are triggered about it? Legitimate question, not rhetorical. Uh, I responded to Mark and said, I think as the publisher of the game, they draw the line anywhere they want. Stonewire isn't saying that this is the play for everyone, just the play for them. Now, Jamie has proven, uh, or has a great deal of respect for Thinker Themer, and he's heard them out. He wanted to try and write what hurt them, and I think that's commendable, just as I would if a company provided alternative art to replace Magellan if you or others were bothered by his inclusion. Mark uh, responded back to me there and said, um, he liked the answer, but said, Jamie values inclusion, and maybe he doesn't want his games to be the opposite of his vision for games. My next question is, if this sets a trend, wouldn't it hamper the bounds of creativity? After all, we can say this is just a game along the lines of this game isn't for me, but others may like it. Uh, he says that his original comment may have sounded sar sarcastic, but his question and desire to understand the situation was legitimate. Um, and my answer to him was... I don't think it hampers creativity at all. Um, I think it's about context. A game, this game is about building a vineyard, and, and it doesn't, it, and it doesn't need, nor would one expect, conquistadors featured. But a game about a period in history would. And I made the example that you would expect uh, a swastika in a game about World War II, but it would be horribly out of place in the art for like Everdell. Um, and, and I think that's really what caught Thinker Themer off guard. They weren't expecting to find conquistadors in a game about a vineyard, or about building a vineyard, or, or running a vineyard. Um, and, and so because they wouldn't expect to find conquistadors in that game, they weren't expecting it. They weren't ready for it. Um, and context is important. And, and ultimately, that's what I think the real issue was in this particular case. At no point did Thinker Themer say, these people shouldn't be featured in a game. It's very much about the context in which it, they, they, are, they show up, right? Um, and, and, I, and I really, I, I don't think I could do a better job than saying, like, like I said, you would expect to see swastikas in Black Orchestra or, you know, a game about Nazi Germany. You would expect to see that. Um, however in another circumstance, in another situation, radically inappropriate, totally out of place, that type of thing. Now, here's why, you know, some people, um, there's a term, you know, that's been going on for a while now, like cancel culture and saying like, you know, this was canceled or, or, or that, you know, this is just censorship or whatever. But that's not the case because as, as I mentioned before, Stonewire isn't saying, hey, everyone should take this out of games. Don't include these people at all. They're not doing that. Jamie and, and, and Stonewire Games themselves, they're not putting you know, a, a mission statement out there and saying, hey, this everyone should be doing this. They said, this is what we think is appropriate for our game. And they took action. They, they didn't, they didn't um, you know, and, and really, they didn't even wait for a mass outcry. They literally heard, Jamie heard one 
you know, reviewer, one set of reviewers, um, voice this and say, this conflicts with the mission of my company. This does not, I, I guess, pass the vibe check, if you will. This is not how I want, this is not the, the, the feeling I want to evoke when people encounter this game. As as we've said a dozen times before on this show, and as Jamie has said a dozen times elsewhere, their mission is to bring joy to tabletops worldwide, and this missed the mark. By by Jamie's estimation, this missed the mark. And so he did, you know, took the effort to fix it. And again, I, I think that's commendable. I think um I, I think both I say both ways because uh, at least in America, there's there's uh, you know two political parties and and they are you know usually diametrically opposed in and what one party wants the other one doesn't and, it, and it's it, you know there's very little compromise right now it seems um, it is very much deadlocked and so um, you know when you hear about cancel culture or, or things getting uh, replaced or uh, maybe people not liking what someone else does. This, I think, is an example of the right way to do it um, in terms of of a compromise. Uh, Jamie didn't have to produce these cards. No one had to come to him and force it. This was a choice he made. This is literally freedom of choice. This is literally freedom in action. Jamie had the ability to to stick to his stick to his guns and say no listen th the game is as it is as printed but he saw an opportunity to right a wrong and um you know for his part he he stood up and he, and he took um he, he shouldered the blame i i know all of us proofreaders saw those cards and didn't see anything of it cultural consultants saw it and made mention that we should that, that they shouldn't be glorified but you know didn't say hey don't exclude don't include them on um, these conquistadors um and so ultimately um this was you know somebody exercising the freedom to accommodate a viewpoint that 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 he missed that we as proofreaders missed that anyone else who had eyes on uh you know the the product before it was printed missed um it, and I, I i like i said i think that's commendable i think it's commendable that uh that, that jamie heard you know quite literally two people express that this was deeply hurtful to them and it made a decision to produce this so whether you want to play with these cards or whether you want to play with the original conquistadors at least in the initial print run of which i understand it's pretty massive um is certainly within your your ability to do so um and i'm sure that you know i'm sure there'll be like a secondhand market that, that pops up around the the people you know replacing their cards and having these other cards um, available you know, I'm sure these some of the the cards that are being replaced will be on eBay or available some way or another. But um, yeah, I, I just I wanted to, this came in the mail. I wanted to take a look at it, share it with you guys, but also um, I wanted to share that conversation I had with Mark um, because I, I did originally kind of take it negatively, and I almost responded negatively. But I think by taking a step back, really kind of measuring what I wanted to say or, or really what I would hope to get across um, by taking just, you know, a little bit extra time to maybe word it in a more graceful fashion than, than maybe instinctively I wanted to. Um, ultimately, I think we had a good conversation. And um, again, none of this was, was to shame Mark. I appreciate so much that he probably assumed that we had a different take on this and still felt comfortable enough to say, Hey, let's, let's have a conversation. And, uh, I hope I, I did him justice in the reading of his words and, and interpretation. And, and I hope, um, you know, that I, I spoke to the issue fairly and, uh, yeah, I mean, ultimately that's my hope for my country again, is that we can, um, 
start to have conversations again um, in, instead of shouting matches and, um, you know, score one again for uh, individual choice and being able to, uh, you know, do something because you want to, not because the crowd necessarily tells you you have to. Um, but also sometimes the crowd is right and sometimes the crowd is, you know, saying the right thing even when it's not popular. Of course, those uh, situations vary. I'm not trying to make any particular statement there. Um, but yeah, that is all I have for you this week. Until next time, take care of yourselves and take care of each other. All right. Thanks for watching and bye.